need to get more family chiropractic. Tonight on. And we're live. And we're live? Should be. Yep, our live. There it is. There she blows. Okay. Not on any phone. Good thinking. Mm hmm Because I seem to be the one that always has that issue. News feed. Does the chair go any higher? It does. There you go. I'm going to try not to wiggle the desk, too. Perfect. All right, good. Oh, I'm yawning. Mm, that's no bueno. No yawning allowed. No yawning allowed. Oh, I didn't share it. Well, it's 6 it is 6.15. Let's get started. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching us live, we're really going to have a great discussion this evening about shoulders and shoulder pain and some things to do to prevent shoulder pain. If you're watching it on a replay, well, guess what? You're still going to get all that great information. Um, you know, this week's class is really something that you're going to want to share with people that you know um, that might have shoulder pain. Um, because we, like I said, we're going to go through some really great information. Um, so share it to your timeline, you know, text your friends, uh, the more people we can reach the better. And if you have any comments or questions during our class, you know, post them in the comments and we will definitely answer them just as fast as we can. Um, and we love, you know, definitely getting discussions going during mm -hmm. class. It really adds value to the conversation that we are having. Um, and our passion is to help people naturally and we can't wait to share some of these natural ways to alleviate your shoulder pain. Oh, and I'm Dr. Robin Lawrence, by the way. Oh, yes, and I'm Dr. Sarah Ponica. And we are Get Well Family Chiropractic. Yeah. <laughs> How did we forget that part? <laughs> because everybody knows us, right? All right, so a little bit of shoulder anatomy for you. The shoulder is a really intricate area of our body. Um, it has capability of almost 360 degrees of motion, as you know, mm -hmm. and um, the shoulder is by far the most mobile joint in the human body. Indeed. Uh, it is also made up of ligaments, which are white, shiny, flexible bands of fibrous tissue that holds, hold joints together and connect the various bones. And then tendons, which are tough cords of tissue that connect muscle to bones and muscles too that help support and rotate the shoulder in many different directions yeah lots of stuff going on in the anatomy of the shoulder it is um by far a complicated mechanism it as is. well right so the bones that make up the shoulder include your collarbone right also known as your clavicle your shoulder blade or your scapula and the upper arm bone your humerus Ha ha ha, right? It's not funny when you heard it. So a couple of different protuberances or sticky outy things, right, come off of our scapula, which are really important um, for muscle connection as well as uh, ligament connection that make up our different joints. They're called the coracoid process and the acromion process. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for joining us. Yay! So as far as our joints there... Covering it up here a little bit. So the shoulder itself, which is kind of that ball and socket, is known as the glenohumeral joint, and that's that ball and socket joint, like I just said, and it facilitates forward, circular, and backward motion of the shoulder. And then we have the sternoclavicular joint, um, which is where our clavicle meets the sternum, which is kind of our chest bone here. So that's right there. And then the acromioclavicular joint, our AC joint, is where the clavicle meets the acromion process, which is kind of why we mentioned that acromion process mm -hmm. earlier. Yep, exactly. All right, so the soft tissue of the shoulder is made up of ligaments, right? Dr. Sarah mentioned those are the white, shiny, flexible bands of fibrous tissue that hold the joints together, right, and connect the various bones. 
And then there's tendons, which are those tough cords of tissue that connect muscles to bones. And we have muscles that help support and rotate the shoulder in many different directions. So, you know, you might want to capture a picture of this slide because there's a lot of different stuff going on there. Um, what I want to mention is that the muscles that you can see um, that are called Terry's major muscle and then the subscapularis muscle, those are actually underneath the shoulder blades sitting on the rib cage. So we really work those muscles a lot when shoulders can't move. Um, so just so you have an idea of what's going on, um, the pectoralis minor tendon that you see there, um, that's going to be up here in the front. So you're really seeing um, a depth of layers yeah. to the body in this picture. Here we go. All about movement. All about the movement. So due to the ball and socket joint of the shoulder, uh, many different movements are made possible, and the movement types here include extension, which is moving our shoulder back, <laughs> flexion, up, abduction is out, adduction. <laughs> I feel like we're going to be pirates now. <laughs> um, internal rotation, and then external rotation of the shoulder. And even a minor injury can limit these ranges of motion, which can be frustrating and painful. Yeah, for sure. You know, especially my kiddo last night fell off his bicycle um, and was having a lot of pectoral shoulder mm -hmm. kind of pain. So we'll be definitely working on him. All right. So common conditions, right? So while there are many ways the shoulder can be injured, the most common shoulder problems fall into four major categories, right? Tendon inflammation, bursitis or tendonitis, which I we diagnose a lot here in the mm -hmm. office, or a tendon tear, instability, arthritis, or a fracture, right, a broken bone. So let's discuss each one of these individually. Bursitis. So small fluid-filled sacs called bursae and the singular bursa act as cushions between the bones and the overlying soft tissues to help reduce friction between the gliding muscles and bones. They are found in joints throughout our body, including the shoulder. An overuse of our shoulder can cause this inflammation and swelling of that bursa between the rotator cuff and part of the shoulder blade, resulting in a condition known as subacromial bursitis. And with bursitis, many daily activities like combing your hair or just getting dressed, anything where you have to really, mm -hmm. you know, lift your arms above your head um, can be difficult. Or like putting on a jacket or a shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about tendonitis, right? Tendons are those cords that connect the muscle to the bone, right? And inflammation in the tendons results in one of two types of tendonitis. There's acute tendonitis that can occur due to excessive ball throwing or overhead activities during work or sport. Um, then there's also chronic tendonitis, and that is attributed to repetitive wear and tear and degenerative diseases like arthritis. So, right, you can have, like, say you're painting your ceiling and then your shoulder hurts the next day, right? Mm -hmm. That would be acute. But say your trade is painting and you're painting overhead all the time, and that just never goes away, and it becomes chronic. The most commonly effective tendons in the shoulder are the four rotator cuff tendons and one of the bicep tendons. The rotator cuff helps provide shoulder motion and stability and keep the arm bone aligned in the shoulder socket. So let's look into tendon tears. Long-term overuse and wear and tear, or a sudden injury, or aging can all cause the splitting and tearing of our tendons. Tears could be partial, or in severe cases, um, they might completely separate the tendon from its attachment to the bone. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, rotator cuff and biceps tendon injuries are among the most common of these kinds of injuries. Mm -hmm. All right, we also have something that's called impingement, right? Shoulder impingement occurs when the top of the shoulder blade, the acromion, puts pressure on the underlying soft tissues when the arm is lifted away from the body, right? As the arm is lifted, the acromion rubs or impinges 
on the rotator cuff tendons and the bursa. This can lead to bursitis, tendonitis, and cause pain and limit movement. Hey, Kyle, thanks for joining us. So shoulder instability or dislocations occur when the arm bone, that humerus, is forced out of the shoulder socket. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> and this can happen as a result of overuse or of injury. A partial shoulder dislocation, which is termed a subluxation, um, but a little different than a little different our than our subluxation here in chiropractic, results in the ball of the upper arm coming just partially out of the socket. <sighs> A complete dislocation means that that ball of the bone comes all the way out of the socket. Dislocations can occur repeatedly as a result of a loose or torn ligaments, tendons, or muscles around the shoulder. And re recurring dislocations, which could be partial or complete, um, cause a lot of pain and unsteadiness when you raise your arm or move it away from your body. And repeated episodes of subluxations or dislocations lead to an increased risk of developing arthritis in that joint. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of arthritis, <laughs> any joint of the body can be impacted by arthritis, right? The most common type of arthritis in the shoulder is osteoarthritis, also known as wear and tear arthritis. Symptoms such as swelling, pain, stiffness typically begin during middle age. And osteoarthritis develops very slowly, right? And may be related to sports or work injuries or chronic wear and tear or simply being out of alignment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Just like your car, if your front wheels are out of alignment, your tires are going to wear and tear more on one side than another. So if our bodies are out of alignment, one side's going to wear out faster than the other. Osteoarthritis often worsens over time. Other types of arthritis can be related to rotator cuff tears infection and inflammation of the joint lining, right? As a result of arthritis pain, people will avoid shoulder movements, which sometimes leads to a tightening or stiffening of the soft tissue parts of the joint, resulting in severe restriction of motion, which is often why we say with arthritis, move it mm -hmm. or lose it. Yeah. Right. True. It actually will so help true. to decrease some of the pain if you continue moving those arthritic joints. Olivia, thanks for joining us. Hi, Olivia. All right, fracture. So shoulder fractures, which is also broken bones, um, commonly involve the clavicle or that collarbone, the humerus, the upper arm bone, and the scapula, which is our shoulder blade. And as you can imagine, fractures often cause severe pain, swelling, and bruising around the shoulder. Uh, older patients can experience shoulder fractures as a result of a fall from a standing height. And additional causes of shoulder fractures are going to include high energy injuries like a motor vehicle accident or contact sports injuries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So shoulder health, right? So like any injury, prevention is the key. There are several steps that you can take to ensure good shoulder health. To start, listen to your body, right? It sounds simple, but often people simply ignore pain symptoms causing further damage and, you know, prolong the healing process. If you experience shoulder soreness or pain following activity, do not ignore it, right? There needs, there's no need to tough it out, right? Take a break for a couple of days, allow your body to heal. You know, if the pain is severe, doesn't go away, you know, come see us, right? Or go see your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you do happen to injure it, maybe put it an arm in a sling and just let it rest. Yeah. So another way to prevent injury is to stay active. Keep your body in good physical shape with regular exercise and a healthy diet. Not only is physical activity necessary, but exercising the right way is really crucial mm, to so injury important. prevention. So warm up before you work out. That's really important. Um, start slowly if you haven't done a sport or a certain activity in a while. And learn how to lift weights the right way and don't lift too much. If you spend a lot of time doing overhead motions or have a job that requires a lot of overhead work, try cross training. So cross training can be a really good way to avoid injury while maintaining your physical fitness. And for example, if you're a swimmer, you could try trading one or two swimming workouts for running or biking to reduce stress on your shoulders. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and before we move forward, I want to go back to, you know, if you lift weights, make sure you're lifting the right way, mm -hmm. right? You, 
I keep bumping the desk. I apologize if we wiggle a bunch. Um, you know, watch yourself in the mirror. Start with lightweight because your form is critical. It will reduce and prevent injury. If you're not sure if you're doing it right, grab one of the trainers at the gym. Um, or, you know, reach out to us. We have personal trainers that we work with on a daily basis. I've worked with a personal trainer in the past. I've got some great tips for form. So, you know, really watch your form. Start with light weights, nail down your form, and then bump your weights up. Oh, you have to move our face again. <laughs> We're just all over the screen today. Right. I love it. So lifting and exercising using proper form to strengthen your shoulder can not only help stabilize the joint, it also helps to prevent painful dislocation injuries. So here are some exercises that you can try. If you have weak shoulder muscles, you can start without weight or use a water bottle, right? Or a soup can, something like that. So arm circles with weights. Right? So you're going to stand with your feet hip width apart. You're going to hold a light weight in each hand. And you're going to let, just let your arms hang loosely down at the sides. Um, and then you're going to lift upward. And you're going to make small circles until they're horizontal position. And then hold this position. Is this what they're asking me to do? what we're doing is we're hanging loose. And then you're making circles oh, with here. your arms. There we go. And then you come up out Got it. until you're horizontal. Or maybe it's up. But yeah, I think, it's out. I think it could go all of those yeah. ways would be really great exercises. So starting down doing small circles and then mm -hmm. moving it up with small circles. Beautiful. So repeat this exercise 10 to 12 times per side. Alternate between forward and backward circles because that's super important too. Don't just do it one way. We have two sides of our body, front and back. Um, and do a total of three sets per side. Now the stabilizer, all right, while holding a light weight, stretch your arm out in front of you. Make sure your hand is at the height of your shoulder and your arm is straight. Hold the weight steady there for 30 to 60 seconds, then switch sides and repeat the exercise. Right? And the stronger that you get, the higher your weight can be. Mm -hmm. Right? Kettlebells are real uh, popular yeah. right now, too. So if you find like a lightweight kettlebell versus a barbell or whatever, a dumbbell. So avoid work-related injuries by using good posture when you sit or stand at work. If you work at a desk, make sure that your workstation is set up so that you can comfortably use your computer. And avoid remaining seated for too long by taking a break to stand up or just walk around and walk around the office and yeah. once an hour. Mm -hmm. And when you're lifting, do so safely by keeping your back straight and using your legs. Also, don't strain to reach things. Instead, use a step stool if you have um, if you have to reach high places or place items that you regularly use in drawers or on lower shelves. So you mean don't climb the ladder and reach way over to the side <laughs> to try and get something. Sounds like a good way to fall and I guess stretch your shoulder too far. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. So let's also talk about sleeping positions, right? So if you sleep on your side, you really need to be careful not to place all of your weight on your shoulder. I don't know how many patients talk to me about it. I can't sleep on my shoulder, right? So you want to use pillows to help distribute your weight evenly and to relieve the pressure that's placed on your neck and shoulder. So you want to make sure that your pillow fits from your ear to the edge of your shoulder. And you don't want your shoulder up on the pillow. You want it, you know, at the bottom of your pillow. You also consider alternating sides um, or maybe try sleeping on your back, which I know is hard for a lot of people, especially when we're so used to being side sleepers. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you might want to try is putting a pillow in front of you. If you're one of those people that tends to curl the top shoulder over, you can really impinge um, that AC joint, that acromioclavicular joint here yeah. too, along with the first rib and the collarbone. So keeping a pillow in front of you, if you don't have someone to uh, snuggle with in bed, um, to keep that shoulder back may also be a benefit for you. Um, sleeping on back definitely can be more comfortable too if you place a pillow underneath your knees. Emily and Linda are watching too. Thanks for joining us, ladies. Hi, Mom. Hi, Emily. Alrighty. Shoulder impingement usually takes about three to six months to heal completely. Um, more severe cases can take up to a year to heal, but you can generally start returning to your normal activities within two to four weeks if you have impingement. And following a, sh a shoulder injury, rest and ice are really essential. You'll want to apply ice every few hours if you have a shoulder injury. 
and persistent or severe, severe pain should be discussed with your doctors. Mm -hmm. Definitely, or us. I'm your doctor. <laughs> All right, so physical therapy is often recommended um, for aiding shoulder injuries, right? The physical therapist can really work with you to tailor a rehab exercise routine to get your shoulder back to normal. Sessions can include um, things different, like different various modalities, um, electric stim, heat, stretching, massage, all to help reduce the pain. And chiropractors dun, dun, dun. can help too. Uh, chiropractors are known for treating issues of the back and the spine, uh, including back and neck pain, but chiropractic care can also be extremely beneficial to pain associated with the shoulders and our extremities. And no matter what your specific shoulder issue is, a chiropractor will begin with a targeted diagnosis and exam to determine where the source of that irritation begins that's causing you that shoulder pain. And once a diagnosis of the precise physical cause is made, uh, treatment for shoulder pain can begin. While well, relief will start after the first adjustment, a series of chiropractic adjustments may be required to help your shoulder pain um, issue resolve completely. And chiropractors also use various modalities for pain management, including um, our manual adjustments, massage, electric stimulation, and more. Yeah, very similar to a physical therapist. Yep. And we are not physical therapists. Correct. So, you know, whether you're interested in injury prevention or really working on rehabilitation, keep in mind that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Each person's unique anatomy, symptoms, medical diagnosis, and goals should direct one's choice of exercises and treatments, which is why speaking with professionals regarding your specific needs is recommended to help you maintain and regain optimal health. It's really essential to keep in mind prevention and recovery from shoulder injury may require different exercises and protocols from each other. Um, some activities that are optimal for maintaining shoulder joint health and injury prevention might not be appropriate if you have had a past or existing shoulder injury. Yeah, so really that's all we have for you tonight. Um, so if you're interested in getting your hands on the resources that we use to make today's class, reach out, we'll definitely send them your way. And we did it. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we know that we covered a lot of information, but we are here to help if you have any questions at all. And if you have any questions right now, you can go ahead and share those in the comments or you can always reach out to us later. Um, remember to allow any part of the body adequate rest by getting enough sleep and working different body parts on different days when you go to work out. Um, and if, you, if you've experienced an injury, don't ignore the pain and just push through it. Mm -hmm. And we are here to assist you with any injury or preventative measure that you're interested in, not just shoulders. Not pain. just shoulders, that's right, absolutely. All right, and if you're experiencing shoulder pain or anything else that feels not quite right with any other part of your body, give us a call, you know, and see if we might be the ones that can help you. Our aim is really to help everyone so that they can reach optimal health. And please join us next Tuesday, September 29th at 6.15 for our next Facebook Live class. Mommy, my ear hurts. And we'll be sharing ways to stop kids' chronic ear infections without having to resort to drugs or surgery. Yes, indeed. indeed. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great night.